The speakers for this session include Her Excellency Dr. Amina Gurib Fakim, former president of Mauritius. Dr. Mina has served as professor, dean of faculty, and pro vice chancellor at the University of Mauritius. She has also co authored more than 30 books, book chapters, and scientific articles, is the recipient of five honorary doctorates, and has received numerous international honors and prizes. Also, His Excellency Jose Manuel Barroso, who is the former president of the European Commission and has served as Prime Minister of Portugal. He is currently visiting a prof as professor at, Cath at the Catholic University of Portugal and the Graduate Institute of International and Development Studies in Geneva. And finally, our two youth speakers, Caroline and Lauren Sandberg, who join us from the Sierra Nevada. They're both students at Tahoe Expedition Academy and leaders of the Eco Leaders and the Earth Warriors Environmental Club. Marisa, I invite you to please start the session. Thank you, Summer. We're so excited to have everybody here and have these fantastic speakers. So thanks everybody for joining us. Um, we are going to start with this question, why the ocean? Uh, this is our opening session and we really are excited to have our speakers here to help us explore, explore what is really the relevance of the ocean right now in this era that we're in when we have a lot of conflicting priorities that we have to address in this world. There is a lot that we need to deal with right now. So why should the ocean be front of mind today and every day? And so um, Her Excellency, Amina, we're going to ask you to please open the session. We're very happy to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us um, on this beautiful day. I will let you take the mic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear me well? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, excellencies, distinguished guests, young people, thank you very much for associating with this event. And I will have a particular word of thanks for Ash Pachori. Shanali and of course the entire pop movement for associating me with this very, very important event, which is of course celebrating today our ocean. So ladies and gentlemen, I grew up on an island and from a very young age, I had learned to appreciate the magic of the oceans and also how it inspires fear and respect. Our ocean's vastness presents another threat. We don't know the depth of the ocean in the course of a day, we don't see the effects of climate change every single day. We just see this great big ocean and we wrongly assume that it's too big to be wrecked. It's easy as a consequence to diminish the urgency of the challenge. Yet we know that climate change and pollution are damaging our environment and the oceans. I find it unacceptable that the magic of a pristine ocean that I enjoyed as a child might no longer be transmitted to the next generation. These challenges that the oceans face demand collective action and deserves the world attention. It will be a recognition of the reality that the ocean's health is our health. And if we agree that the oceans connect us all, they will by corollary affect us all. Oceans are home to millions across the world and provide food and nutrition for more than a billion people. My small island country, Mauritius, is located in the Southwest Indian Ocean, the world's third largest oceanic division. Since time immemorial, the lives, livelihood and traditions of Mauritians have been inextricably linked to the ocean. For us, the ocean economy and the national economy are indistinguishable. So the investment we make today in terms of advocacies, policies and resource will not only serve our economy, our well-being, but will also be critical to our foreign policy and our security and is vital to who we are as a race. Ladies and gentlemen, dangerous changes in our climate caused in the age of the Anthropocene, dead zones in our oceans caused again by man-made pollution, unsustainable fishing practices, unprotected marine areas used to be home to rare species and entire ecosystems are putting at risk our own livelihoods. The health of the oceans will define in large part our health and the health of our economies. So how we treat our oceans is a burden 
as the oceans feed us, protect us, regulate our climate, our weather, anchor industries for transportation to tourism to trade of all kinds. Our conservation efforts and our obligations to combat climate change go hand in hand because marine areas already have to cope with overfishing and ship traffic and pollution from both macro and microplastics. Our oceans act like sponges, absorbing most of the extra heat caused by global warming greenhouse gases, which are our common enemy, as they are the cause of the ocean's falling oxygen levels and the rising level of acidity. Both trends are changing the chemistry, exacerbating and stressing life under the waves. Our escalating greenhouse gas emissions are the cause of the warming of the ocean, by which coral is bleached, ecosystems lost, extreme weather events fomented, and sea level made to rise ever upwards. As oceans warm and sea levels rise, our lives and livelihoods are likely to be changed too. Home will become uninhabitable. Floods will increasingly devastate communities, crops will wither, and industries like fishing disrupted having rippling effects on the food chain. Cultures that have coexisted with the ocean for millennia are forced to flee to higher grounds and over the years will be threatened with extinction. The more of these threats that we eliminate through conservation, the more resilient those ecosystems will be to the consequences of climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, recognizing the fragility of these ecosystems, the UN has dedicated SDG 14, setting out a series of targets aimed at conserving and sustainably using the ocean resources. We will need a compass to guide our recovery course, and we have a reliable one in the form of 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda coupled with the Paris Climate Agreement. Through these, we can ensure that short-term recovery solutions are in, in accord with long-term development and climate action objectives. The vision of a blue-green post-pandemic recovery fully accepts the priorities of fostering economic development and creating employment, at the same time promoting greater social equity and welfare. In the energy sectors, tradition Transition to renewables, for example, it foresees innovative energy storage, the installation of flexible power grids, electric vehicle charging systems, green hydrogen, and multiple other energy development technologies. All of these will mean jobs, jobs, and more jobs. The blue-green recovery road will take us through economic weight stations and environmental agreements that will bring human systems and natural systems into a new harmony based on respect and balance. This must surely be the hallmark of any forthcoming UN Ocean Treaty Conference on Biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction, so that we will soon live in a world in which at least 30% of the ocean out of the 70% outside of natural jurisdiction is protected under effective and well-managed conservation measures. Ladies and gentlemen, Think only of the fact that every second breath you take comes from the ocean. You will find good reason to welcome that prospect. We have already known that humans and nature are part of one connected system with nature providing us with our basic needs and much more. Yet lately we have been riding over nature's benefit roughshod, taking too much for granted, disguising greed in our finest costume of profit and progress. On the blue-green recovery road, we will set out to put that right. We will move from linear exploitation of finite plant resources into a sustainable era of circular economies. We will advance into sustainable food systems, resilient cities, and rapid transition into renewable energy systems. And we will safeguard the biodiversity of nature upon which our lives ultimately depend. In the interest of the ocean's health, when we say we will plant a trillion trees, yet science has shown us how a healthy plankton population can easily surpass these trillion trees. Still, we must include the restoration of mangroves, seagrass and kelp in the knowledge that they sequester four times more carbon than their terrestrial cousins. Blue-green recovery foresees an end 
to the unconscionable levels of pollution and waste for which we have of late been responsible. It demands an end to harmful subsidies distorting such sectors as oil, gas, and fisheries. It demands an end to the international scandals of illegal fishing, overfishing, and modern slavery at sea. When it, what it expects of government around the world is to look beyond the short term and put in place equitable policies, investment decisions that are in harmony with a sustainable future. In the long run, the survival of our kind may be intrinsically linked to the fate of corals. Thus, the course of blue-green recovery must steer us well away from the dreaded territory of 1.5 to 2 degree centigrade global warming. So ladies and gentlemen, if we care about the legacy that we will leave our children, we will have to act boldly. And now, as it becomes increasingly clear that we cannot seriously protect our planet without protecting our oceans. If we love our children and theirs, if we love this planet, and if you love life itself, then staying true to that course is the ultimate obligation. Sustaining our old ways will but resume a course toward devastating hurricanes, flooding coast, vast wildfires, proliferation of famines and wars, massive displacement of population, and the recurrence of global pandemics. A blue-green recovery has faith in the genius of our species, our powers of innovation, and our ability to share ideas and resources with empathy in adversity. We must take these currents while they serve us through the sadness, trauma, and the sacrifice that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought upon us. Finally, we must interiorize the saying that we did not inherit the earth from, the parent, from our parents, but we borrowed it from our grandchildren. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Amina. That was amazing. Yes, that was beautiful. And you have so many really important points. I mean, the ocean, the health of the ocean is instricably uh, tied to our own health. So we cannot forget that. Um, we really appreciate that amazing presentation. Um, I am honored now to invite the next speaker, uh, His Excellency Jose Manuel Barroso. Uh, former president, European Commission, and former prime minister of Portugal. 